When we first heard about the Rock and Roll Camp for Girls, it was like, I think anybody would be like, indie rock goddesses teaching eight-year-olds guitar, you know that that was an interesting story. When we went up there and we started talking to the girls, we realized there was this larger mission there that had to do with how girls feel and culture, and especially around music. The camp is a week-long session. It's run completely by volunteers. They have about 100 girls come to the camp for one week. On the first day, they form a band, pick an instrument, and start writing a song and practicing the song. They also learn zine making. They learn self-defense. They do workshops on body image throughout the week. And then at the end of the week, they perform to a sold-out crowd to uh, about 750 people. We started realizing that there was this whole other story here that had to do more with how girls were perceived in culture and music was sort of this metaphor for this larger story. And so once we sort of stumbled into that, it was kind of like, well, are we going to stop making this movie now just because we're guys, you know? And we felt like maybe the challenge, instead of just pulling out and saying we can't tell the story, was to learn and to be able to tell the story. When we shot at the camp, we also had two women who worked with us as well, did really great work, and we knew there would be situations where we shouldn't be shooting. Have you, have you ever noticed how Cookie Monster never chews anything and it always flies out of his mouth? That's how we can't get fat. We chew our food and enjoy it and then spit it out and we're done. No? Everywhere you turn, every magazine you open, you walk out here and a bus will drive by and there will be a thing on the side that shows a half-naked woman, super skinny, airbrushed into perfection. And as Laura says in the movie, you know, every time I open a magazine or something, you know, I have to like pluck my eyebrows, lose 10 pounds, get, you know, tone my arms, all this stuff. And it's impossible to do all of that stuff. And so what it ends up doing is creating this sort of poisonous atmosphere for girls at a really sensitive time, which is sensitive for all of us. <laughs> Rock and roll has been this tool to break things open and, and release things. Like in the 50s, you know, all of North America was this very oppressive society and rock and roll was able to break it out. And now girls are living in a much more oppressive society than I ever realized and I feel like that I've, that I've ever really experienced. And so they're just using the same tool that's been used in the past and it just, you know, it just allows them to break out of this oppression that they've, that they've been living in.